Final Fantasy VII Remake was a disappointment for me personally, and in this video I'm going to try and cover as much as I can why. Uh, this is going to have spoilers for the entire Final Fantasy VII game franchise, including the movie Advent Children and the spin-off games. Um, this video is also going to be incredibly unstructured because it's just my thoughts I'm literally not going to get paid for this or anything and maybe nobody will even watch it So I'm not going to spend forever getting this video like super tidy and perfect I don't consider there to be much point so for the lack of structure in this video. I do apologize <clears throat> I have some notes I'm going to be referring to those notes and I'm just going to be saying what I feel uh, as we go through this It's going to be a quite long video. So, you know, um, grab some popcorn Get comfortable, and uh, yeah, let's go. Alright, well let's start from the beginning. Red 13 is a guest character. That's terrible. I don't know why they decided to make that thing. That's the worst thing ever. The fact that he's a guest character, he shouldn't be. But, you know, let's actually uh, go through some of the other stuff that I have written here first before we get into the actual criticisms. So, I wasn't actually going to make this video because of how much criticism there is uh, and how much I, uh, I know that this video is going to be disliked but I'm really passionate about Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy series and I want my opinion out there regardless of the, the hate I'm going to get for it. Uh, if you can bear with me, I will try to explain to the best of my ability uh, that I can why I feel the way that I do uh, and obviously feel free to disagree and leave your thoughts in the comments. I encourage a discussion on this because this was a giant event for a lot of us. So for me personally, this was a life event. Um, you know, for some people, the biggest thing of their lives is like going to like a concert with their favorite, you know, music performer, or like maybe waiting for the release of a certain movie that they've been waiting for for years, or going to like a big like boxing match, or like an MMA fight, or going to like a big sporting event, like a final uh, of something, or going to Disneyland or something like that. Like people get excited and are quite hyped and really looking forward to like a big event in their life. So uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake was that for me. So for me personally, this was like one of the biggest events of my life. And I know that, I know that, that will sound sad for some people, but other people will relate to that because of how much this game means to them and how long they've played it and, you know, how much they were waiting for uh, a remake. So yeah, so um, yeah, I was excited for this for years. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this, was, this was that for me. And um, I played the original Final Fantasy VII for probably thousands of hours at this point. I own it on multiple platforms, um, you know, different devices and everything, and I've played it lots and lots of times. Giant fan of the original. Um, so bear in mind that these criticisms come from a place of love for the original and understanding that, that this isn't trying to be that, and this is trying to move away from that even. So, alright, so I've got tons of notes here, so I'm going to just basically go through the notes, and I'm going to say what I have written, and then I'll expand on points if I feel like I have something else to add. So we'll start off with what I liked about the game, because that's a good place to start. Instead of just starting with a you know boatload of negativity, let's go from the beginning of what I liked. So I do feel that uh, all of the characters were well realized in terms of how they acted, except for maybe Rufus, Sephiroth, and Rude. And I'll expand on this a little bit later. Uh, some of the new pieces of music were really nice. There was a couple of pieces. Uh, I don't actually have the names of them. Maybe I can do that later. I can put it in the description. If you're interested in seeing the music that I liked from the game, uh, leave a comment and then I'll put those particular pieces in the description. But uh, yeah, I do think that some of the music was really nice. Uh, some of it. I'll get to the you know my criticisms of the music later. I also feel that some of the cutscenes and moments were amazing for building connection to the characters and for us as fans to have what we imagine realised and brought to the PS4 and beautiful graphics. It was really nice. So I do feel that they did uh, do very well in some of the cutscenes and some of the character development and expanding on characters that we knew from the original. I think that the combat looks good. I think that the combat looks very good. In fact, uh, it's one of the highlights of the game is how good that the combat looks. <clears throat> Um, seeing these characters in HD looks great, just touched on that, and that's pretty much it for my what I liked list. I didn't have that big of a list, really, for what I liked about the game. I'm sure there was a little bit more than that, but those are the main factors that I have written here. So, <clears throat> into the criticism now. Sorry for the, for the coughing, I've got a little bit of a sore throat, but we're going to continue. Nonetheless, I'll try and cough away from the mic from now on, but anyway. So, let's start from the beginning. Uh, Replayability is what I have written here for the first point. As I said, this is going to be incredibly unstructured and I'll be returning to some points and going all over the place in terms of how this is being approached. So replayability, I found that the game is not really replayable that much. 
the original Final Fantasy VII is really replayable. You can replay that game like a, a million times and, you know, still find it enjoyable. I know that there's a lot of people who do still play Final Fantasy VII. You can even just go check out Twitch. I'm sure there's people probably playing it right now, live, the original. Um, it has a lot of replayability, that game. And there's a lot to do, there's a lot to enjoy, and it keeps you engaged. Whereas with this game, I feel like it's kind of, you'll play it once, maybe you'll play it again to get the trophies and unlock everything. Um, you know, maybe you'll play it again a while after playing it. But I feel like majority of people haven't finished this game, and then the next thing that they're immediately doing is replaying it. I, I, I don't know, I could be wrong on that, correct me if you're one of those people who is still playing it now and still enjoying it. Um, I was hoping to be one of those people actually, I was hoping to be somebody who would keep playing the game after I completed it uh, and still be engaged because, as I said, giant fan of the original and when this game was coming out, I thought that this was going to be, you know, was going to take up a very large section of my life going forward because I would just be replaying it a lot, but yeah, I don't think it does have a lot of replayability. I uh, find the game is uh, boring, unfortunately, for a lot of parts. <clears throat> I know that you can get different dresses for Cloud, Aerith and Tifa by replaying. I'm not sure what else you can unlock and I'm not sure if there's secret endings by completing on hard um, and by collecting everything and doing the side quests and stuff like that because I, I skipped a lot of things to be honest. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not really sure what else there is worth replaying for. So okay, so on my notes here I have that I skipped the side quests. Um, maybe somehow that saves the game, but I imagine it's just, you know, you talk to people, defeat certain enemies, and then you do some tedious tasks. I imagine that's what the side quests are. Uh, if the side quests are really good in this game, can you leave me a comment and tell me that? Because I haven't explored any of them. Um, I started off in the beginning, uh, in Sector 7, when you first get access to the side quests. I did the one where you was like looking for cats or something like that, and I thought like, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing the side quests in this game. I, I'm just really not interested in it. I just wanted to see the story, but if they somehow save the game, if they're a saving grace of this game and they're really good, then, um, you know, just let me know what you think about that. So, as I said a little bit earlier, I liked some of the soundtrack, but most of the soundtrack was generic. Uh, and like for the example, the, the wall market music, I didn't actually like that that much. I preferred the original game's wall market music, which they kind of changed into like a battle variation in this game. Uh, but the wall market music itself in this game really wasn't as punchy, it wasn't as like, you know, powerful and like... Uh, that's, that's, that's like the way that I'll describe it, is that I feel that the music kind of felt quite flat. It wasn't punchy, it wasn't impactful like the way that... Uh, previous Final Fantasy titles music is. So I love the music personally from the Final Fantasy games that I started playing from was 7 onwards. So the, I love the music in 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14 and even a little bit of 15. I haven't actually finished 15. It's a Final Fantasy game I never got around to finishing but I really did like a lot of music from the previous titles. I was uh, very happy with a lot of them. I thought that they were very good. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I, thought, I thought that the music was very good in the other Final Fantasy games. This game, not so much. I didn't really feel like a giant connection to the soundtrack. There was a couple of pieces that were good. Um, I'm a giant fan of Nobu Uematsu. I feel that his work is very good, and I also like some of the other composers from the other Final Fantasy games. Their names I don't know, but there is a lot of music that I like from 12 especially, and that was not... Uh, had a lot of music not done by Nobu. Uh, there was this sad piece of music that played when Tifa, Barrett and Cloud <clears throat> revisited Sector 7. Uh, I loved that piece, I thought it was really nice. Uh, but yeah, majority of the music fell kind of flat and was kind of dead for me and not really impactful. So yeah, that's that point. Let's get to the next point which is the graphics. So I thought that the graphics were not good um, in several places. So in the beginning of the game, you know, the material that they used for promotional footage, uh, with Cloud jumping off the train, the starting section with the, you know, bombing the reactor, um, that section looked amazing. I, I remember I was streaming it. Um, I was showing it to my girlfriend, the, the actual footage of the game, and I was going through and I was stopping at everything and looking at the signs and looking at the detail on each and every little thing, and it was all great. It, it looked amazing. And then, um, yeah, we got to the slums, and once we started getting to that section, uh, things started to really fall flat. 
Now, I'm not sure if this is a, an issue of budget or time. I feel like it's one of the two, or it could be restraint of the system, the, the PlayStation 4. Maybe there was only so much they could fit, uh, you know, within the, the, you know, the constraints of the PlayStation 4. But for whatever reason, they made serious sacrifices with lots of graphical things in this game. So, um, I remember there was somebody I saw in the YouTube, YouTube se uh, comment section who actually made the comment that, uh, that they basically, the slums are so poor that they weren't able to afford textures. And it's quite funny because the slum sections, uh, there's several parts of the slums. If you look around, you move your camera around and you focus on several parts. They look like PlayStation 3 gra graphics, um, maybe even below that, which is quite um, surreal to see because you've got these really high res uh, character models. Um, you know, in, in the scenery, it's really not that high textured and it looks really jarring and off. Uh, it's very strange that it ended up looking like that. I'm not sure why that ended up happening. So uh, also as well, there's a section where you're climbing up the Shinra building, uh, you know, to access the actual main Shinra building. Uh, and there was like this, I looked at the background, uh, you know, so they, they were showing off the rest of the um, Midgar. And it was a really pixelated image that they had for the background, like for the skybox, really pixelated. Like you'll probably be able to catch that moment yourself. If you go to the chapter, I'm not sure which chapter it is, but it's the one where you're climbing up all of the, the wreckage to get to the Shinra building. If you look at the skyline, there's a really pixelated picture. It literally, it literally looks like the original Final Fantasy VII, like how bad it looks because it's just literally a picture just stuck there that, uh, you know, they, they didn't even want to put a high res picture there for whatever reason. So yeah, for some reason, there's serious issues with the graphics in this game. There's the notorious door in Sector 7 when you have your own little room that you're given, that door is just not loaded in for whatever reason and it stays like that, a texture never loads on it and it just looks awful throughout and uh, when you're with Aerith in the beginning, you know, going through after you meet her in the church and you're going through the slums you know, just have a look at the rocks, have a look at the ground, just have a look at, look around there's several sections of the game which for whatever reason really doesn't look good um, <clears throat> And I have here, which is quite ironic as well on my notes, uh, there's this aura of vanity in this game that I noticed that I found quite bizarre. So um, I've wrote here, that there's an aura of vanity in the game where I can't help but feel like the people who have developed it have had these moments where it's like, hey, look how amazing these character models are. They're super impressive, right? Look at how gorgeous Cloud looks here. Uh, kind of like to distract us from the fact that the game itself isn't that good. Like, they really put emphasis on the things that they, um, that they did right to try and distract us from the things that they didn't have the budget or time for. So, yeah, that's the, those are the notes that I have written, and, and, and that's a point that I honestly really do feel strongly about. I feel like that they, there's like this kind of vanity display where they really want to put emphasis on Cloud and just show how good he looks and just have him from lots of different angles and make sure that the camera is nice and zoomed in on him and cutscenes and stuff so they can try and distract from other things. Um, I feel like the character models kind of, uh, for the most part, they look amazing. There's certain angles that I thought that Aerith and, and Tifa looked quite off. I don't know why, and I don't know if it's just me personally, but I thought that they looked off at times, and then other times they looked great. Um, I don't know if they were swapping between models like they did in the older games, but uh, there were certain moments where I thought stuff like that. Uh, there's invisible walls as well, which I find is a, a, a big Im immersion breaker. So when you're running along, you'll come to like, I don't know, like if you're, if you're running into rubble or if you're running into like a section which looks like you can sneak past like a little corner, uh, you can't. Like there's loads of invisible walls that stop you from going to places. There's lots of fixed part of the, parts of the game where you can't run off to explore. You'll have this kind of unknown force, drag cloud back and then a, you know the, the thing will appear on your screen and then you have to get back to your storyline task. So stuff like that happens. Um, I also have here that the NPCs feel like NPCs in this game. Uh, they really don't feel alive at all. Uh, at least in the original you could actually talk to everyone. Uh, in this they are just kind of like rambling robots that stand around and uh, that's just pretty much the case. You know, for whatever reason they decided to take this approach of having the NPCs kind of like have one or two lines of dialogue and then they will just, you know, repeat those one or two lines of dialogue constantly while they're just kind of standing around or sitting around you know, cycling through the same animation over and over again. Um, I honestly don't think it was a good design choice, personally. 
Uh, there was a couple of moments, uh, like uh, when it had the news on, talking about the, the aval avalanche attack uh, on the screen. The NPCs were literally standing around in front of the screen and they were rambling. And I was trying to listen to what it was saying on the news, but I couldn't actually hear it because the NPCs were talking so loud. And they're all speaking at once with different dialogue, so it's all clashing over each other. It's all the same volume, so you can't hear what's on the news screen, but you hear these NPCs like rambling, like just talking. Uh, and it's the same with when there was like, uh, you know, dialogue between Aerith and Cloud. There was certain moments when I was walking through uh, the slums, and then we just had all of these NPCs talking, so I couldn't understand what the main characters were saying, you know. Uh, kind of disruptive and a bad design choice on their on their behalf. They could have made it so they reduced the volume on the NPCs when you're walking past them or when there's a cutscene. Or heck, just don't make them speak at all. The, there was not really much need for them to speak. It's not as if it made them feel more real because they didn't feel real. And another thing which I've just remembered to, to add here that I don't actually have in my notes is that they look very generic, uh, very kind of like, you know, ordinary people like kind of like outside world people in this Final Fantasy game you know uh, they missed the giant opportunity here to kind of make decent looking NPCs like give them interesting outfits like don't make it so you just have the main characters like dressed unique and then you have all of these NPCs who are just wearing generic t-shirts and trousers like they had an opportunity here to, to literally design clothing for these NPCs that could have looked so interesting that they might even even been able to freaking start a clothing line. Like, think big. Like, think about that. I personally love the way that Cloud's dressed. Uh, I'm a big fan of his outfit. If they had, like, variations of stuff like that to wear in real life, I'd wear something similar because I think his outfit is that cool. Uh, imagine if they designed the NPCs in, in this Final Fantasy game to, like, look just unique and just not look so generic and had like I don't know just different styles to them because that's one of the things that's always been kind of huge in the Final Fantasy games is that the main characters always have this kind of unique look like they have clothes that are different from the norm and that's been a standout factor in every Final Fantasy game like since 7 that the characters look unique but you know they really took a kind of like I don't know, like Fallout NPC look for the freaking standard NPCs or whatever, you know? Uh, the NPCs really don't look that good at all, so... Yeah, sorry, a bit of a ramble there, but as I said, we're going to have a lot of doubt. we still got several more things to get through. Um, okay, so what else have we got here? So same thing happened uh, when the main characters... Yep, we've covered that. Um, yep, I talked about as well. The, the graphics of the game looked completely good in the beginning and then it started to fall through uh, once it got to several sections of the game so the promotional footage was perfect and then the game's quality started to fall down um, aha here we go we've got some new point here so it feels like basically more like a giant corridor than it does like a world it's a, it's, it's a giant corridor game similar to kind of Final Fantasy um, 13 it got a lot of criticism for that this is very similar uh, in a lot of aspects in the sense that, you know, there's a lot of sections in this game where you're following a strict path and there is no option for you to go on a different path. And if it is to go to a different path, it's like, it's like literally to go just around the corner to open a chest and that's pretty much it. And then you'll have winding paths, which is still linear. It doesn't mean it's not a corridor. Just because the, the paths are, are, are winding and they connect and they go around in a circle, that doesn't mean that the game's not linear. It's still linear. It's just a circular path that goes towards the same direction. Um, you know, like the sewers and stuff like that. And there'll be a lot of reused assets and of reused parts of the game where you can see that they're just using the same part of the game put in a different section so you'll walk through the tunnel and you'll be in the same room that you was just in if you play close if you pay close attention to the game there's a lot of that a lot of recycle recycled assets so they can extend uh the the time that a certain thing is used there's like a lot of stretching in this game they're really trying to stretch things out and i'll cover that more as we get further in the in the video and um, I also have here, this is one of the, the sadder, sadder points that I made, is that we will never actually be able to see Midgar truly realized and shown, I don't think. It really depends on how they take this series. But to be honest, I really do not have that much confidence going forward. Uh, it's unfortunate and hopefully they, they prove me wrong. I would love it if they prove me wrong, but I don't have much confidence going forward about what we're going to see happen with this series and happen with the games. 
but um, I was under the impression, like a few other people that I spoke to, that this game was going to have all of Midgar. That's why they had to divide the games into parts. They even fed us uh, what I, at this point, think was a lie. Uh, they said something along the lines of, we need to split this game into parts because it's a giant task to remake the game faithfully and to do it right. Well, one, I don't think that they did the game right. And two, uh, this displaying of Midgar was minuscule and a small fraction at best. So, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on that. Uh, I thought that Midgar was going to be huge uh, and, would get to, and we would get to go to all of the reactors uh, and to all of the sectors. Uh, remember that there are at least seven sectors. I do think that there's more than that. Uh, in this game, I think you only go to Sector 7 and Sector 5. I'm not sure if the other parts really count as sectors. And even going to those parts, they didn't really feel that big. Um, there is a very short section when you're at the surface and you see a tiny bit of the housing estate as well. You know, when you're uh, stealing from Jesse's mum's house. Uh, that section, you see a little bit of the, of the upper estate. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, sectors 1, 2, 3 four six and i think there's even more than that if you look at the if you look at the um the actual mako reactors on the midgar map i think there's actually more than seven and um, you don't go to visit any of them in this none of them you visit none of them and you don't go to the top plate you don't go to the main city section like in advent children where it had like the busy sea section with the uh you know the waterfall in the middle and all of the upper level where all of the rich people are you don't jump on trains apart from when it's part of the story you don't you, you can't maneuver and jump on a train to go to one section of, of of the map and then come out in a different section you know there's a it, it, honestly it's really really minimal this game is it's really minimal and uh, that's a giant disappointment to somebody like myself who's used to these Final Fantasy games being you know sprawling huge uh, you know giant worlds um, and you know it feels like marketing that they said that they you know they split this game into parts so they can do it justice and they can do like a good job and, and have each game be big it feels like marketing it doesn't feel true now because we've got this game and it wasn't big so the excuse is just to make money, I unfortunately think, at this point. Yeah, okay, so the next game will very likely uh, be the characters leaving Midgar. So what little we got, uh, that probably, that's probably it in its entirety. And if it isn't, uh, if we do go back to Midgar again, there's more, more there that takes away from, that, that takes more away from uh, the development time and effort on outside of Midgar. Uh, and there is still literally 80% of Final Fantasy 7 to remake, which at this point is very obvious. They are going to scrap and change and rewrite most of it. So, um, sorry, I got a little bit, I got a little bit uh, lost in my words there because I'm trying to follow through with the notes. But yeah, what I'm basically saying is that uh, there's still a large section of Final Fantasy 7 that they haven't made. Uh, you know, if you refer to the original, and because of the changes that have happened in this one, because of how much they've gone off task, and obviously because of the ending, it's just obvious that they're just basically going to re-scrap majority, majority of the original to, to fit into this new narrative and to fit into their kind of budget and to their kind of way of them, you know, creating the world. Um, which is sad, and I'll touch on that a little bit later, but again, you know, we're really not experiencing the original game in a new format. We're experiencing a new game and somebody uh, put a comment on a different video saying that it's essentially like we have these cosplayers who are basically like, I don't know, it's like a new Final Fantasy game. It's like a spin-off. It's, it's not so much like, you know, it isn't so much even like a remake. It is like a spin-off. It's, it's a separate title, essentially. Um, um, so I have here as well that for several reasons, it felt like one big tech demo more than a game. Um, there's that game that was on the PlayStation, I can't remember what it's called now. I honestly can't remember what it's called, but it got a lot of criticism for being beautiful. Very beautiful game, but it was very short, it was like five hours or something. And people basically said it's more like a tech demo than it was a game. And I feel similar with this. I feel like it was like just one big extension of that original tech demo that we saw for the PlayStation 3 with Cloud jumping off the train. It didn't feel like a game, it felt like a short, a short burst of what's to come and I kind of can't help but feel like that was slightly intended so they can try and get us excited for the next one 
kind of like um, Hideo Kojima did with Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes before Phantom Pain. He gave us like a taster, and I kind of feel like that this that's what this game is. But considering it was a full price game, um, I just think that that's a bit despicable that, that, that they would take that approach. And you know, as I said, we the, the what this was intended to be, it didn't end up being, I believe. I know that they did go through some development struggles along the way. I know that they changed developers. Uh, the original developer that they had are the people who work on the Naruto games, I believe. Um, I can't remember what they're called. It's on the tip of my tongue. Something Connect or something. They have they have a green logo. But basically, they were responsible for the remake. They got scrapped. And then I think that this game had far less time for development because they had to work with a new team. So. Um, to be fair to them, you know, you got to remember, man, these things are made by real people with real lives and there was real stress and real hardships to get this game together and to get it released. And I know it's not nice to have somebody like myself sitting here critiquing it and pulling it apart. I understand that. Um, you know, this is this is people's hard work that I'm sitting here kind of insulting and critiquing. But the reason why I do so is because of how much it means to me. And um, but yeah, at the same time, I want it to be known. That I understand the the reasons why these things have happened that I'm that I'm criticizing. I understand the potential reasons for them, but um, you know the reasons where it's down to time restraints and budget restraints. I can totally understand. But if it's down to things like laziness and cutting corners and you know wanting to take a franchise and a story to make money from to get a cheap buck, like stuff like that is not really good, and I don't really support it. So. Yeah, sorry, that was totally off script, so we still have way, way more to go. Um, where was I? Okay, so we were talking about the fact that it feels like a, a big tech demo. By Final Fantasy standards, the game itself is also quite short. Uh, to me, a Final Fantasy should be around 50 hours minimum in a casual run without boredom. So that's like leveling up, battling, and following the story, etc. That's not that's without doing all of the side quests. If you're doing all of the side quests, Final Fantasy games are usually around 100 hours if you're doing absolutely everything. Um, yeah, but usually if you're just literally just going through the story and you're leveling up and you're battling and you're doing some stuff here and there It should be around 50 hours and you shouldn't get bored because the gameplay loop is enjoyable. It's uh, Fresh there's new stuff going on. It's engaging. It's not the same thing on repeat over and over again And that's what this is this this game is a lot of that. It's the same thing on repeat over and over again uh, I completed this game at level 35 in 32 hours now that really doesn't feel Final Fantasy to me, like most Final Fantasy games, if you're trying to rush through and you, have, you know, if you're not a speedrunner who's finding all of these like exploits, most Final Fantasy games you're going to be around level 50, level 60 at least uh, before you complete them. Um, I think that the the cap in this game is level 50, as far as I know. My friend said that he got to level 50, and I think that that's the cap, which is understandable because it's a part game, but still, it just feels off completing a Final Fantasy game at level 35. Uh, really didn't feel too good. Um, uh, yep, yeah, so when you factor in, so basically, yeah, uh, it took me 32 hours to complete my playthrough, but when you factor in that there's a YouTube video that's showing all of the cutscenes of this game, which is about 9 hours long, uh, my playthrough is left then to be about 23 hours of gameplay, and that's really not that long, you know, for a £60 game, Final Fantasy game, 23 hours of gameplay, that's really short. Like by comparison to the other Final Fantasy games and we are going to compare here because that's what this is meant to be and they didn't split the games up so the games could be short they split the games up because of budgetary issues and so they can give us as much content as possible but this didn't end up being that much and if they're just going to split the games into like I don't know 20 you know 32 hour games each um, how long are they going to continue to milk this and continue to press it, you know, before people realize, before people get sick of it? And to be honest, you know, the next game is going to be setting a standard uh, that is really going to dictate what happens with the rest of the remake because I feel like they've already lost the support of some people with what they've done with this and the next game is going to be the final nail in the coffin if they go too far off and they really don't find a way to please people, which I'm really concerned about if I'm honest but anyway for a Final Fantasy game um, and I know that's because the game is divided into parts but I think that that's quite short and that was them okay dragging out the task right we covered that um, all right so another point again we're going all over the place here because I just have random notes that was just like a you know uh, 
just my consciousness just kind of pouring out on the things I remembered. So we had the boring, repetitive, crouched, walking and leaning against the wall segments. Now, I absolutely had to speak about this. Um, I think a lot of you, even people who enjoyed the game, will have noticed that and not really been a big fan of it. Um, I feel as though those were put in to cover up load times and to load assets. And I know that those segments were in the Tomb Raider games, that's where I recognised them, and I know that, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake was made by Square Enix, so some of the team from the Tomb Raider team maybe got over there and, and, and chucked in the, you know, the, the leaning against the wall segments. I find it funny that the, the, the squeezing between the wall segments were even in one of the earlier trailers of, the, of this game, and it, and it ended up being kind of like a, a, a giant gameplay moment that was repeated and used a lot in this game. But as I said, the only thing I could think it could be is that they were loading assets and they were using it to disguise loads. Otherwise, why would they put that in there? Was it meant to look impressive? Am I meant to feel good about looking at Cloud like super close, squeeze through a little hole? and then have the other characters kind of like half invisible like walk into him so it doesn't even look realistic i don't know why they did that and it was just you know it didn't look that good at all um yeah so almost every task in this game seems like it should be a five minute task that they stretch out to be a 20 minute or more task so like flipping switches running around and there's a new section of the map which is pretty much identical um, to the last section that you was just in and then you have to do a similar task in a slightly different way It kind of feels like filler. They're stretching it out They're using the same gameplay loop for an extra bit of time to try and make it so your gameplay length is longer So like I said 23 hours of gameplay out of that gameplay You know you could say that maybe 60% of that gameplay was me doing the other 40% of that gameplay because they stretched segments out in a, in a way that was... I can't explain it, but I think that some of you watching this will understand what I'm trying to say with that. And you'll know exactly what I mean by by playing the game. It just... it's not the same. It wasn't enjoyable gameplay um, loop, you know? It wasn't an enjoyable, it was just the same thing over and over. Uh, long, tedious battles. Now, I know this is probably going to be divisive, but I felt like the boss, boss battles uh, had more health than they needed, which is weird. This is a weird criticism, because I usually don't mind long battles. I really don't know why it bugged me in this, because um, it's not as if I completely don't like the battle system. I think the battle system's okay. Uh, but I generally felt like the battles were dragged out. Uh, that little bit longer longer than uh, than is satisfying. You know, like, there's a, I feel like there's a certain amount of time that's satisfying in a fight. So if you're fighting a boss for a certain amount of time, it's satisfying. Or if you're, like, doing a challenge run in, like, Dark Souls or Bloodborne or something like that, or even in a Final Fantasy game, if you're doing a challenge run, you want the battle to be long because, obviously, you're, you're fighting them without any equipment or, you know, fighting with low stats, stuff like that. That's when you want the battle to be long. In this, the original kind of casual run playthrough, it feels like the battles are just a little bit longer than they need to be. Like, it's it's not that satisfying time. I felt like I just felt like that for for several sections of the game that they were just kind of tanky damage sponge bosses that had like these multiple um, phases. Uh, I, I don't know. As I said, I think it is probably a divisive opinion. Maybe a lot of what I said is, but that's something that I do think is a divisive opinion for, for whatever reason. I didn't think that the boss fights were. Uh, super enjoyable for the most part i feel like they could have been a little bit shorter um okay so I actually i have a big section here talking about what i just talked about uh with the with the with the crouching sections another thing which happened was the red 13 uh running across the wall sections so uh, my girlfriend actually pointed that out when i was showing it to her that essentially she said like oh, i bet that's going to be used quite a lot now and sure enough four 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 or five times more they make you call in red to run across the wall to activate a lever and it's just it's it looks it's immersion breaking because it looks like a video game you're using the same animation you're using the same segment over and over again it creates that sense of i'm playing a game instead of like you know instead of like a sense of like oh okay so you're doing different tasks it, it takes you it takes you away from the fact that you're playing a game if, if you make it creative and if you do different things but if you reuse the same gameplay loop it really just isn't that good and i'll give another example of where it happens the original the last of us i don't know about the second 
but in The Last of Us, they had this section with like trying to get these wooden planks and passing a ladder, and they reused them too many times to the point where it kind of felt like, ah, oh, here we go, I have to get the freaking wooden plank across the water again, I have to get the ladder again, and it's just reusing gameplay elements that are not really fun elements. They're kind of dragging out time elements, and they do that for several things in this game. Alright, so here's, here's, here's a point that I want to discuss. Having Biggs, Wedge, and probably Jesse all survive is actually a bad writing move in my opinion, uh, and not nice for us as fans because we played with the prior knowledge of them dying and it made moments more powerful only to have the carpet pulled from beneath our feet. Now, what I mean by that is we as people who enjoyed and loved the original knew that all three of those characters were going to die going into this game and that made it so everything that happened with those characters was more significant because we knew that we were going to lose them eventually we knew that they were going to die and it made us kind of have more of an attachment and more of a kind of a sense of we didn't want them to die but we knew it was going to happen and it and it created this it created this really good um what i feel feeling of kind of like I don't know, I can't explain it, but it was really well done. I really liked that feeling because it was kind of like, it made me sad, but it was so nice to see them realized and it, and it, and it strengthened the message of the kind of Avalanche versus Shinra battle that, you know, if you try, you know, the ultimate message of that whole battle is, is that if you try and go against the powers that be, uh, you know, people that you love and people who are good people will die. And that's true. Unfortunately, that's true of life and it was a very strong message that they had that if you fight You're gonna lose people that you love good people are not going to make it through and that's what that message gave But by making them live it changes it into Disney and it changes it into a fantasy story in the sense of Not a Final Fantasy story more of a kind of like fantastical happy ending everybody's fine everything works out for the good guys kind of story and that's just not the way that it should be because that's not the source material and i'm one of those people who feels that they should have stuck to the source material a hundred percent and i have a friend who agrees and i'm waiting for my other friend to complete this game so i can get his opinion because i'm really interested in it um but i'm pretty sure that he's going to feel the same way is that if you start to stray away from the source material you're going to make people unhappy and you're going to change the impact and why people wanted a remake People wanted a remake because it was so good to begin with. You don't need to stray from it. There was no need for it. So that's my opinion on that. And um, the funny thing that's quite weird as well is that they didn't show that Jesse is still alive, which is even worse. Um, if Biggs and Wedge are still alive and she's dead, that's even worse because they killed off the woman of the group. She was really well developed and she was likable. And there wasn't really like a big thing to kind of point out that she was dead so she didn't really get like a big send-off she didn't really get like a kind of uh like do you, do you know what i mean like in a story sense she didn't get like a big moment to appreciate her as a character and a send-off uh if she is in fact dead and the other two are alive i generally feel like she's alive i i feel like she's alive i'll, I'll be very surprised if they did kill her off and then they're just not going to say anything about it and then biggs and wedge are just going to be in the rest of the next games or whatever it'll be a weird decision if they do it that way but anyway let's move on now to a point that i think is a kind of very important to point out here let's just see how long we've been going for so far whoa -ho -ho, 39 minutes and still going we've still got plenty more to go as well so let's keep going all right so here's one of the points that i feel is extremely important to point out let me just double check that i'm actually recording again because i needed to go off that to to double check it all right here we go all right so here's a point the whispers let's talk about the whispers so I think that The Whispers was a really bad addition to this game and I'm sure that there's some people who agree and there's some people who disagree. I feel like this is one of those ones where a lot of people are going to agree, um, but I could be wrong. I feel as though the addition to the game was really badly executed and just felt off from the very moment that they were first shown. I was curious about them, I wanted to understand what they meant, and then when we got the explanation from Red 13 that they were kind of like these people, sorry, they were kind of like these spirits of fate that were trying to kind of make the path of fate stay on the course that it was meant to be on, I found that really interesting, I thought it was cool, I thought it was a nice um, touch, 
and I thought it was good. What I didn't like is that they ended up becoming enemies and they were perceived as enemies and then you had to defeat them to be able to free the characters in this game to go on their own path, to go on their own story. And what I don't like about that is that when you think about it, if you take a few moments to think about it, what the whispers actually represent are the fans. It represents the people that wanted the game to stay as the source material, to stay as the original story. And they're kind of put into this kind of like negative villain way. And it's just not, it's not nice. It really does feel to me, to me, that the whispers represent somebody like myself uh, and, and all of the fans who wanted it to stay really close to the original. And you have these moments where you're having to fight essentially the fans. It's kind of like what they did. It's like, it's like kind of like metaphorically you're fighting off all of these fans who are saying, oh no, stay to the original content. No, 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 make sure that the characters die. No, 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 make sure that it's turn-based com combat. No, 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 make sure that things follow exactly as it was in the original. And then, you know, they're trying to keep it like that. And they're trying to keep the path exactly the same as the way that it was originally. And you're, as these characters in this Final Fantasy VII Remake game, you're fighting all of that off. Like, no, we want our own destiny. We want to be able to walk our own path and do things differently. So it's kind of like, alternative timeline, you know, Cloud, Tifa, Aerith, um, Barrett and Red 13, you know, it's, it's an alternative timeline kind of um, thing that they're going for. And what I don't like about that is that what this kind of goes to show is that what we wanted as fans has been kind of thrown in as a story element. And I find it slightly insulting because it's not as if what we was asking for was bad. Uh, and it's not as if what we was asking for wouldn't have sold and wouldn't have done well. It would have done well. It had a place in this day and age. I don't know if they were worried about edgy content, maybe. They were worried about if we kill off characters, that's too edgy. If we decide to kill off Aerith in this remake, it's going to be too edgy. Like, if that's the kind of mindset that they have, then all art is lost. I generally do feel that way because it's writing around the basis of trying to fit into the times, sacrificing the art form itself. And I have several more points to add, uh, talking about things similar uh, as we go along in this video. That I feel sacrifices are made in order to achieve things, and I do not feel that it's a worthwhile uh, trade. So yeah, my personal opinion, the whispers represent the fans of the original original game that want it to be structured and as faithful to the original as possible. And Numura or whoever it is who's in charge of this, I believe that it is the same writer and the same person who was responsible for, for the original Final Fantasy VII, which makes it more hurtful is that we have this person who is obviously in a different space in their mind now, they're in a different time in their life, and they're a different kind of creator now, and they're essentially wanting to bring a new story, and to change things in a way that they feel like, to add their creative freedom for them to act how they want to act with their, uh, you know, original idea. The problem with that is, is that that can be done as a spin-off. The fact that that is done now with the remake that we have all been waiting for, it means that we'll never get the remake that we imagined. We'll never get that original remade. We will get only this new spin-off, um, you know, other timeline-y storyline. Unless somehow he's going to make it so the, the two timelines meet. And then that, again, it's just going to get too crazy because there's a whole bunch of timeline, time, space, continuum stuff going on in video games that just gets too messy. People don't want that. People don't resonate with it, I, I find. I think that some people like it, and I think that it's okay uh, in certain circumstances, but Final Fantasy VII, like, uh, come on, the plot was already, already developed. It didn't need a timeline, time, space, going through portals, fighting freaking whispers and giant purple bosses. We didn't need all of that stuff, in my opinion. I just feel like it, it was when this game really started to stray and the, the creative people who are in charge of this, you took a serious risk by, by making a move like that. And now what we have are new characters experiencing something new as opposed to the original. Anyway, I'm going to move on because I still got a lot to get through and I'm going to be touching on this probably a little bit more. So here's just a kind of pet peeve to just kind of jump to a completely different topic 
One thing which I noticed about the original game is that you could select the armor of uh, your character or the weapon of your character and you could select all of the material at once and you could swap that material to another character. So you can just take every material that's slotted into their armor. As long as there's enough slots, you can move it all over to another character. There was this one moment towards the end, the part where we had Red 13 running across the wall and activating switches in the laboratory section, which was completely new and added to the Shinra building. Um, you had to switch between two parties over and over again. So that was like uh, Tifa and Aerith, and then you had Cloud, Barra, and guest character. Uh, Red 13. Again, Red 13 guest character. Really terrible idea. Terrible, terrible, terrible that they've done that. And I hope that this isn't really bad news about the game go games going forward. That we're not going to be able to control Vincent, Sid and Yuffie. Can you imagine if they find a way to make these people as guest characters? It's just going to be really insulting again because, you know, uh, whatever. Anyway, let's, let's get back to the original point. So switching materials. Um, yeah, it used to be easier in the original, but in this game, I was switching between the two parties over and over again, and I was switching between Aerith and Barrett's materia. Every single time they wanted me to switch parties, I had to select each materia and put them from one character to another over and over again, one materia at a time. It was just a bit of a headache, and the reason why I was doing that is to continue leveling up the materia that I was using on both characters. I wanted to level a certain materia, so that's why I was switching instead of just equipping them with different ones. Um, yeah, I just feel like it was just a bad uh, little thing that they missed out on. They they could have easily copied that over from the original, but for whatever reason, it was an oversight, and you can't switch the material over from you know a full uh, armor or weapon. Okay, again, jumping over to to another thing. Let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen in the next ones. I have a kind of a prediction, and I feel that a lot of people feel the same way. I feel as though Aerith is going to live now. Or it's going to be optional. So when we get to that game, there's going to be things that you can do to make it so that she can survive. Um, or maybe you'll have the option to go to the original where she doesn't survive. I feel as though, though, it's uh, going to be a very, a very kind of like, uh, I think it's going to be forced. I think they're going to force us to make her live. And again, it takes away from the original. It's a powerful moment. It's an iconic moment in video gaming it has significance it has history it has impact and it's like an artistic piece it's a it's like a painting that has already been painted and the artist has come along years later after receiving success and is like hey i'm gonna redo the painting again now but we're gonna do we're gonna change how the painting looks it's like, it just doesn't work like that. That's just not how art works. And unfortunately, it looks like they're going to make her live. It looks like that Zack is potentially still alive, maybe out there somewhere. And they're trying to hint at that. That's potential. I don't know. It kind of seemed that way because he was walking along with Cloud at the end. And he seemed to, the injuries he seemed to have got were not as devastating as in Crisis Core. So it seems as though Zack is alive, Aerith is alive. She's going to make it, I mean, you know, she's going to survive. So then we have this whole other story going on. But again, it's it's a spin-off. That's a different timeline. That's something different. That's not what we were prepared for. It's not what we were... It's not what we signed up for. It was essentially false advertising because we signed up for a remake of the original, not a remake as in we're going to change everything. And I know that there's some people who are probably going to put in the comment section, well, that's the whole point of a remake. They are going to change everything. We did know this. And I know that's why I'll probably be bombarded with dislikes. But, you know, I generally just don't feel that that's the case. I, I feel as though they put the wall over our eyes and they manipulated and lied to us in order to get money out of a lot of the fans to then take take the art form and then just, you know, drag it through the dirt and do whatever they want with it. We will never get the original remade. The original is not going to be, you know, reimagined or remastered in a way that we all had hoped for. And it looks like we'll never see the entire city of Midgar, uh, but they might, you never know. There is a chance they could do that with the power next gen. If they just, I, I think probably the best thing for them to do after this game now is just, I hope that they haven't started development on the next one already. I think that it's just wait for the PlayStation 5 and for the new Xbox and then just make the game once they have access to more, you know, 
ability to to make things bigger and to to make the graphics better and stuff like that because then maybe maybe there is still a chance we'll see a full a fully established midgar all right okay so uh let's get to the next point all right so here's kind of a big one and um again i'm really hoping to not offend people here this is not intended to be offensive it is just my opinion and uh i'm going to preface it with a few things so i have no problem with homosexuality trans people or cross-dressing but the whole thing with cloud was totally different from the source material uh they made it they made it in this that cloud kind of silently just goes along with the wearing the dress thing instead of being resistant uh and then they put his they put this like kind of clownish over the top dance scene with that new guy i can't remember his name um you can leave it in the comments if you want the guy who wears the kind of black frilly stuff him and cloud do the big over the top crazy dance scene thing which admittedly i did find funny uh, and kind of shocking and out of nowhere which was the point i think uh, but it was at the expense of Cloud's character, uh, and I'm not a fan of sacrificing the way a character's written for a joke, and there's several moments in the game where they do that. So, again, I do not want that to be misconstrued, that I have any problem with hom homosexual people, trans people, or cross-dressing. I do not. I think that all people are fine to do that kind of thing and, and you know sexual preferences is not a is not a representative of, of your character overall and defining of how you are and how you know what kind of person you are or whatever like i think that that's you know it's a factor that it's a fact that doesn't make you a nice person and doesn't make you a horrible person. Like you, you are who you are, and sexual preferences is, is just, it's just that's just a natural thing. It's just what you you naturally feel, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in terms of Cloud's sexuality, the way that he comes across to me in the original and even in this game, funny enough, is that he comes across as very asexual. He comes across as a person who's not really interested or motivated by sexual means. It's not what he wants it's not what he's trying to do and trying to aim for but the thing is is that by them adding this little joke it kind of seemed as though that they were trying to make it, it it felt more like they were they were insinuating that cloud likes to dress up like a woman and this is what he likes to do this is his thing you know privately and it was funny it was a good joke i get the I get the premise but as I said, it's changing what he was in the original. In the original, he was resistant to it. He didn't want to dress up like a girl and he was kind of forced to do it. And he was told to walk like a girl and it, all of this stuff he was taught and he kind of done it begrudgingly. But in this, he kind of owns it. <laughs> he really does. He owns it. He, he just takes it completely. And then he just like, as I said, it did seem funny and it was shocking and it was out of nowhere. And I get it was done for the joke, but as I said, it, it, it was changing the source material yet again, and I'm just not a fan of that. That's one of the biggest reasons why I'm making this video is that, you know, source material, stick to the source material, and that's one of those points. Yeah, uh, so as I said, I've, I have written here, um, I'm sure it did make a lot of people laugh, you can tell me as well what you thought of that section, I did think it was quite funny. Uh, there were a few moments like that in the game, which were very video gamey in the sense that it kind of felt like a reminder that this is a video game, uh, very obviously and blatantly in your face, and I wasn't that big of a fan of that. Like, yeah, obviously it's a video game, but to break atmosphere to kind of point that out, uh, and makes it obvious that to the, to the player, um, they're, they're experiencing a game as opposed to like, you know, being engrossed in the experience. So if you take people out and you remind them that it's a game over and over again, they're not able to really completely get immersed. Like they're, they're, they're viewing it more of kind of like they take themselves out of it. Like, oh yeah, it's a game. That's why that's happening. And I feel that a lot of other Final Fantasy games don't really do that that much. And this game really kind of was heavy on that. And I weren't that big of a fan of it. So, uh, yeah, so I've got here that there's character model changes that I didn't like that much, including Sephiroth. Uh, the reason why I wasn't that big of a fan of Sephiroth is he seemed kind of stagnant. He was just smiling most of the time. Um, I feel like he wasn't as amazing looking as he was in Advent Children. And I'm not really a big fan of the cat eyes, man. I don't think that they look that good. I think he'd look better with normal eyes. But, yeah, I just, I don't know, there's something off about Sephiroth, as I said earlier in the video, something off about Aerith and Tifa. You might want to disagree on that, you might think that all of the character models look good. I would have personally preferred that they stuck to the source material in terms of, um, keeping the characters' outfits exactly the same. So I would have preferred Cloud to have, uh, 
you know, the purple outfit instead of the black kind of blue outfit that he's wearing in this. Um, I would have preferred Barrett to not wear sunglasses and to have his original tattoo from the original game, because for whatever reason they changed his tattoo. I would have preferred Tifa to not be wearing stockings, you know, actually have her legs out because that's how she was in the original. Again, it's not to do with perversion or anything like that. It's just about sticking to the source material. It would be really good to see the original model characters reimagined into like now as opposed to kind of like redesigned because that's what they are they're redesigned even Sephiroth has like a few little new nooks and crannies on his um on his outfit which weren't in the original and I just think that it's a bit weird to do that like um the thing with the Turks as well I like the fact that they all wore to say the same outfit in the original but in this one they decided to make Rude and Reno wear different kind of outfits and they're more kind of black instead of blue i would have preferred to see the blue uh suits because that to me was iconic the the, the turks wore blue suits it was iconic and they changed that and then we had rufus as well who looks like he's dressed like a mummy or whatever it's very strange the way they've made his uh suit look in this i weren't really that big of a fan of it and his voice actor was awful and his mannerisms and the way that he was acting i weren't that big of a fan of rufus in this game unfortunately all right so yeah moving on next point i will play the next one but uh, I'm not happy to see, uh, I've wrote here, I, I will play the next one, but I'm not happy to see that it will probably be the, the end of the original for good. And what I think I meant by that when I wrote that is that essentially that I feel like the next one is going to be the final nail in the coffin, kind of like what I said a little bit earlier. That it will kind of be where it's fully established how different things are. As I said at the end of this game, the unknown journey will continue. I think it's not really all that unknown. We kind of know what you're doing. You're going for a different direction. That's not really that unknown, but we'll have to see what they end up doing. Um, I wrote here that this could have been a, a spin-off and it would have satisfied people. I feel like it would have satisfied everyone, yeah. I put here that if this was a spin-off, it would have satisfied everyone. If they did a remake of the original game, um, the way that people wanted it, and they did this as well, then it would have satisfied everybody. But because they decided to take the original and make it just you know just this i think that's why a lot of us are going to be unhappy um ah, okay here's another point which is a it's a minor one but again characters and stuff like i care a lot about the source material i didn't like the fact that it was rude that blew up the uh sector seven um pillar he's the one who activated it which is kind of ironic because just a few moments earlier in a cutscene he protects tifa which is obviously staying true to his character in the original game because he likes Tifa, but he then destroys the pillar. Why would you make Rude do that? It, it's, it didn't really fit with his character because Rude always struck me as like he was kind of like a good guy. He was a cool good guy who was like part of the Turks and like just kind of he was the one who was kind of like uh, Reno was this over the top, you know, crazy guy and Rude was the calm. So he's the one who calmed down Reno, who kind of got him organized and sorted him out and stuff like that. It should have been Reno that, that blew up the pillar, like in the original. That's just my opinion. I think it was a bad move for Reno's character. And it just seems to me that they don't think about this stuff, like for, for them to have gone through with that move because they wouldn't have done it otherwise. Because I, just, I think it was a bad character move. All right, so I have here, the ending battle was an awful and scrambled mess. You fight a big flying purple thingy that you yourself don't make contact with, uh, but you, you fight the smaller enemies and then there's a, you know, it attacks the big one by you fighting the smaller enemies and there's a bunch of scripted events in that fight that you just don't press anything, you just watch it all happen. And you have, you know, Barrett and guest character Red 13 attack the big thing. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just thought that was awful. I, they just threw it in their kind of last second. You know, not to say that all of the Final Fantasy games are not guilty of that. A lot of Final Fantasy games have a random boss that doesn't really make sense and just needs to be big and outrageous at the end that has nothing to do with the story. So they've decided to throw that in here. But this one was just really bad, in my opinion. I think it was a terrible designed boss. It was very lazy. It's just like you know, like a big thing with purple glowing things on it, like a big floating kind of uh, reaper thing with purple things. Like, it was just lazy, just weren't very good. And then you had um, the three colored ones that you fought. Uh, I saw actually somebody explain that they may be representations of the original cloud 
uh, Barrett, and I don't know who the third one is, but one of them has a sword, another one has a gun, and I'm not sure what the, the third one has. But essentially, you're fighting the PlayStation 1 versions of those characters, and you're defeating them, so then you can continue on this timeline with these new characters. Uh, I saw somebody's interpretation of, of that's what it meant. And there is like, if you if you assess them, if you use the, you know, the assess ability or the scan ability on them, uh, you can see you can see that it says something along those lines, kind of hinting and indicating that that's, that's what's happening. Um, again, I just weren't a fan. I just thought it was weak. I just didn't, didn't like that direction that they took it. Um, and I'm, I can't believe that I'm going to say this, but uh, I found a PS4 fight with Sephiroth completely underwhelming. Now, Sephiroth is one of the almighties when it comes to, you know, characters, villains. Uh, when it comes to presence, when it comes to, you know, representation, theme, screen presence, like, he is that guy that is just high-end when it comes to villains. There's not many villains that can stand side by side with Sephiroth and can compete with the aura and the effect that he has by being on screen. Um, I just feel like it wasn't captured and realized in this. I feel like it was really weak, weakly done in this. Like his appearances in the game were off and strange to me. And um, the, the the segment near the beginning where he first appears in front of Cloud and he's walking f like around the corners and stuff like that, that was terrifying. Purely based off of the attack, purely based off uh, the fact of how tall he was. He's so tall, and to see this like giant Sephiroth model just like walking down the streets and stuff, I thought I found it horrifying. I found it really scary and good, and it was a good representation of his character and stuff. Um, I liked that. I would have preferred more of that. Make him more elusive in this game. I would have thought would have been better, but they they started to kind of blow their Sephiroth load over and over again. This this showing him more and more giving him dialogue which killed it more and more for me because he's not the original voice actor from Advent Children didn't like the new voice actor at all didn't feel like he had the same kind of effect and same kind of presence so they kept showing him off and he just really wasn't impacting me in the way that I feel they could have done I know that a lot of people are probably happy with Sephiroth because you know the new character model and stuff like that and people are probably not as fussy as I am but yeah, I feel like they dropped the ball with Sephiroth, and when it came to that boss fight, I, I don't know, it just felt like off again, it felt scripted, like the moments, the, the fighting didn't feel uh, exhilarating and um, engaging, because with this kind of RPG slash action combat, I don't feel like they've nailed it in the same way that Kingdom Hearts nailed it in Kingdom Hearts 2, I haven't played 3. But um, I feel like Kingdom Hearts 2 nailed that kind of uh, action combat with RPG elements. And I feel with this game, it's not as fluid. You don't have a jump. You know, it doesn't feel as fluid to say like a Devil May Cry, which is obviously purely action. But because of that, this fight with Sephiroth felt clunky. It felt like there was, you know, the scripted moments. It, it felt like kind of automated. And it just didn't, I, it just didn't impact me. It did, I didn't feel that kind of feeling that I would imagine I would feel fighting Sephiroth. Like, that's the way, that's what I put on this battle. That's, I, I don't think I'm the, the only one. That I saw it as like, fighting Sephiroth is a gigantic event. And for me, the fight with him was underwhelming. Much like a lot of the game. It was, it was quite underwhelming in my opinion. So, yeah. There we go, that's that covered. As I said, I had a shed load to say about this game. If you're still with me, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, I don't know how many, if any, people are going to watch this because of how long it is and because I'm a bit rambly. But um, I really do appreciate it. I really wanted to get my opinion out there because I care about this a lot. Like, it, it meant a lot to me, this game. And I just wanted to give my opinion on it because I know there might be people who feel the same. Or maybe my criticism might be heard by somebody of, of some significance who can do something to, to help, um, you know, please the fans who like the original. That's essentially how I feel. All right, anyway, let's move on to the next point. Um, do, 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 do. Where are we at? We were talking about the Sephiroth fight. Okay, so here we go. 
So I do want to add, and this is probably going to destroy my credibility a little bit when it comes to this, but I actually did end up halfway through the game switching to casual. I was playing on normal. Um, and I put it on casual because I thought the fights were too long. I just didn't enjoy the fights. I thought that they were too tedious and just overextended. And I just wanted the fights to be quicker so I could get on with the story. So I threw it onto casual. Um, and even then, sometimes it just felt like a drag trying to get through a lot of the stuff to try and get towards the end so I could see what even happens in this game. Um, yeah, so I did play it on casual for majority of the game. Um, I might continue and revisit it on normal. I'm not sure yet. Um, do, 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 do. So yeah, but I actually have notes here that when I actually was, I did think about, uh, as I said, playing it on normal and hard, but when I when I actually loaded a chapter up, uh, I was with Aerith and it was a section where we had to walk. And you can't skip those sections, you can skip the cutscenes, but you can't skip the walking sections. And there's actually a lot of them in this game as well. There's a lot of sections where they're walking and then there's dialogue and you can't skip them. It, there's a lot of slow paced moments in this game. As I, as I said, I don't think a lot of people are going to be replaying it to even really witness it. And they might just be happy with the first playthrough and then, you know, all criticism doesn't really matter just because of that. But I feel like Final Fantasy games should be replayable. And it isn't, in my opinion, f like really, really replayable. Um, I wrote here, it might seem like I'm nitpicking everything because literally I am. Uh, because I really love the original and it's hard to not be critical uh, because of that. Um, Alright, so... So I'm going to now summarize. So that's pretty much everything I've got through all of my notes. But what we're going to summarize now, I'm just going to quickly give you an overview of what I what would have made me happy if they did in this game, because it, I feel like it's still worth airing. I feel like it's still worth saying. Uh, I'm just going to say what I think if they if they did do these things, then that would have made me personally happy. It's not as if I'm impossible to make happy. So. All right. So. All right. So first of all, stick to the source material. Stay as close to the original as possible when it comes to story. Um, Try and stay as close to the original as possible when it comes to map design. I feel like the new additional areas that they added in the game were not really all that necessary and didn't really add much apart from making the game more confusing and adding in new story elements. I don't think they were necessary. One thing which I freaking loved that they did in this game that I need to say actually and I didn't say in the beginning is that I loved how they took like base enemies uh, from the original game and they changed them into actual bosses in this game and they did it in a really good way like that thing that you steal uh, the striker star from in the original uh, Final Fantasy 7 that was a boss in this game I really liked that and then we had the weird kind of fish shark looking like you know electronic eel looking thing in, in uh, the, the Shinra building that was an ordinary enemy in the original and a boss in this I like how they did that I like the little throwbacks to the original enemy designs and and stuff like that they did a really good job with that I need to actually praise them for that because that's one thing I didn't praise them for that the, the 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 models of the enemies that they took from the original and re uh, designed excellent job I thought that was an excellent job but anyway uh, yeah so stick to the source, source material try and stay as close and faithful to the original as possible changes like that were fine I liked the fact that they they changed some of the ordinary enemies into bosses in this that was totally fine with me um, I wrote here that the original was insanely good and this could have uh, stuck if they could have stuck to it closer would have paid off for them even more I do feel like that actually I feel like the game would have had better sales would have had better reviews and would have had better universal acclaim because I have seen already that there are a couple of videos on YouTube already of people criticizing it and saying similar things to what I'm saying um, you wouldn't have had those people exist if you stay close to the source material and then you wouldn't there wouldn't have been anybody really hating on the game at all I don't think anyway um, I feel as though in uh, yeah next next thing is uh, make red 13 playable uh, that was something that shouldn't I shouldn't even have to be even be saying I don't even know why that ended up happening um, The only justification that I gave for it when I know when I witnessed it is that okay He's right at the end of the game and they didn't want to fully develop a character and give him all of the the stats and um, you know and, and all of that stuff if you're only gonna play with him for a very short period of the game but again, I think it's weak. You can see, if you look at him closely, you can see he's wearing a collar with materia in it. So I feel as though he was originally a playable character, but they took it out and they changed it last minute. And I feel as though it was probably a budgetary thing or cutting corners or being lazy. Whatever the reason is, they should have made Red 13 playable because he's a main character. He's not a guest. He's not a guest character. He's a main character. So if they wanted to make me happy, how, what they could have done is they could have made him playable. Um, in this uh, action-based combat, they could have gave us a jump button. That would have been good. 
I always wanted when I was younger, I always wanted to play an action-based combat game as Cloud. I always wanted to play a game where you run around with that sword and you slash things kind of Devil May Cry style. So this kind of fulfilled that a little bit for me, but it was like a teaser kind of taster. It wasn't that good. I feel like the combat can be refined to be even better. As I said, visually, the combat looks amazing but I do feel like it's slightly clunky and can be improved. That's just my opinion though. I think some people will be very satisfied with the battle system in this. Um, okay, uh, so the, yeah, so my opinion is they could have added a jump button, get the action combat even better, or make it turn-based. So here's, here's a point I just want to expand on. So I know people think it wouldn't work in this day and age, but think about it, why? Oh, it looks weird having a character run around uh, run run forward and do an attack and then run back to the original spot so that's what a lot of people would say when it comes to action based uh, sorry turn based combat they're like oh it doesn't look good when you go forward and attack and come back to your spot you think that but the thing is there are lots of strategy games and other genres of games that have mechanics like that um, that are not very re realistic in the sense that you know things happen and then there's pauses I mean even in this game when you think about it time freezes when you enter in commands that's not realistic either that's not what happens in real life in fights and stuff so it's not as if you know this is absolutely perfect for kind of creating that real life effect so the whole kind of argument of oh turn-based contact con combat doesn't look realistic so therefore it's not good i think it's a weak argument and i just don't like the the fact that we live in like uh you know we live in an age now where unfortunately turn-based combat is is kind of reduced to indie games and like other genres of games it doesn't seem as though we're going to get like a kind of like high level graphic uh turn-based combat game like a final fantasy like maybe ever again which is unfortunate you know the last one that we got was final fantasy 10 and then final fantasy 13 started to stray off of that path obviously final fantasy 12 wasn't really wasn't really like that it was the first kind of like playing around with the idea of, of turn-based slash action like it's when they really start to go a different direction but i personally would love to the row of three characters or four characters standing facing against the enemy and then taking turns to attack i think it would look good i think it would look amazing with new character models and um i still hold hope and I'm one of the people out there who's saying that I would love that. And if you have made it to this far in the video and you feel even a little bit similar on that, please comment that because I feel like the, the people who make these games need to know that there is a turn-based combat um, market because I generally feel that there is. I, I love turn-based combat. I think it's amazing. So it, uh, I would have liked that if um if i could have picked what was in this game i think that that would have been cool so either that or a more kind of vigorous action based combat yep so um keep it keep it in the lab more as well that's what i would have said i would have said to keep this game even longer held back delay it because the texture issues were really distracting and not very good you know the the Midgar map was very minuscule. We saw maybe, I don't know, 10% of Midgar, if you look at the size of what Midgar actually is, and what Midgar could have been, and what we could have done if they, you know, they decided to remake the whole thing anyway and change everything, then at least let us explore everywhere. We can see by the bike segments that they had in this game, um, which were okay, I'm not going to criticise them too much, I weren't the biggest fan, but I feel like the bike segments were okay, but we can see by how long those segments were, even though it was just the re same recycled um, areas, as you know, because those parts can be as long as you take. But yeah, we can see that, you know, when you're on the bike, you're going past just sort of giant amounts of area that is in, on the surface. There was so much area in this game that we never explored, and if this game had spent more time uh, in development then maybe we would have seen them and I feel like that's something that they should have done is just just held the game longer make there be more to do make the game fuller make the game a bigger game and less like a tech demo that's another thing that I would have uh, added another thing I would have added is I would have actually made the NPC silent for the most part and then make them interactable so you can walk up to them press x and then they'll say a couple w words of dialogue maybe some of them will give you items some of them will give you like i don't know like tasks and you know you could do like mini storylines like that but the fact that they made all of the all of the npcs have lines in this game i feel like it backfired it didn't make them more immersive it made them more robotic and i would have preferred for them to just have silent lines that come 
up when you speak to them outside of cutscenes, and then maybe in certain cutscenes you can make the the NPC speak. It wouldn't have been that bad in terms of immersion breaking. It would have been better than what we got here, I think. And then finally, I would have said ke keep the Advent Children voice cast. Um, <clears throat> I think it would have been very good if they did keep the Advent Children voice cast. Now, I was happy with Cloud's voice in this. I feel that Barrett's voice was good. Um, Tifa and Aerith, I didn't like either of their voices in the beginning, but they grew on me over time. And also Red 13's voice in this did sound good. He was way better than the Advent Children Red 13. He was super British and I only had one line and I wasn't really that big of a fan of, so... But yeah, Sephiroth was the main one. He's the one that I got most upset about. And also Reno, who was Quentin Flynn in Advent Children. They changed him up in this one. It would have been better to have Quentin Flynn in this game. It would have been so cool to hear him again. And um, I think he's too expensive, though. He's a pretty high-profile voice actor, so that's probably why they didn't get him. And um, yeah, but Sephiroth, I'm pretty sure that the voice actor who does Biggs in this game is the voice actor who does Sephiroth. I could be wrong on that, but he sounds a lot like Sephiroth if you listen to Biggs in this game. He sounds like how Sephiroth sounded in Advent Children. Um, uh, yeah, so basically I feel as though uh, having the original Sephiroth voice actor would have been good. And... Um, yeah, they, did, they didn't do that. I'm just going to throw this in there quickly as well since I'm making this video and I'm probably not going to make any more Final Fantasy VII content. So just a quick kind of conspiracy theory thingy uh, thing that happened that I just want to quickly check with. Uh, there's this thing called the Mandela Effect where basically like people, have, people, a lot of people have the same memory of something that happened but then it didn't actually happen. And one of the things that happened that me and a few people I've confirmed with now, I've checked with, at the end of Advent Children, uh, when Cloud meets Sephiroth, Sephiroth says to Cloud, Hello Cloud. But for whatever reason, that's not in the DVD anymore. So, like, and it's not in the Blu-rays anymore. Like, I was wondering if anybody, if anybody does watch this video, if this video does do really well, I was wondering if anybody remembers Sephiroth saying Hello Cloud, because it didn't happen apparently. Which is very strange, because me and several other people remember Sephiroth saying Hello Cloud in English. I didn't watch the Japanese dub of that. But anyway, that is literally it. That is everything I've had to say about this game. There's probably more that I feel that I haven't said, but I'm not going to take this on any longer. This is already probably over an hour now. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for sticking around. If you have watched this all the way to the end, that is, in that is just incredible. It's crazy. Um, I really do appreciate it. As I said, like no structure to this, not really properly scripted. Probably just gonna throw some, get like just some uh, cutscene footage on top of this, just with some music on repeat. So uh, yeah, really low effort by me, but I really just wanted to get my opinion out there. So thank you very much for listening and watching. Um, yeah, so take care, everybody. That's my opinion. Leave your comments down below with your opinions, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. Bye bye now.